Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Luminata. I'm Emory Michael, and happy summer. Thank you. Shamans have a unique way of looking at the world, and they see themselves as extensions of the universal divine spirit consciousness, and they seek to embody that awareness. And they learn to listen from within and see with the eyes of their soul. So tonight, we're delighted to have John Rasmussen talk on the subject of seeing with the eyes of a shaman, learning to let your heart light guide you. And John has spoken here many times before. He's been trained at the Four Winds Institute and has studied with the Caro Indians in South America in the Peruvian Andes. And he's a carrier of the authentic shamanic tradition of the Americas. So it's always a, a great privilege and delight to have John with us. So he'll lead us in a guided ritual and a shamanic journey. So please join me in welcoming John Rasmussen. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <clears throat> and uh, so tonight, um, we're going to explore this solstice and the meaning of the light what it means to access that within us. Um, when you think about it uh, as a being, as a conscious being, the way shamans look at, at creation and, and our evolution here on, on the planet, uh, we have been at some point all things. And, and so we've been the stone people, we've been the animals and the plants and we're children of the Mother Earth, and we're children of the Father Son. My Caro teachers, the last of the, of the Inca people, um, Inca in Quechua means child of the sun. So when we talk about what it means uh, from a shaman's perspective to be the light, it's very much about how do we access that part of ourselves? We have all of it, we have all the parts. And there is this part in us that is, is the light. And it's, uh, it's a very powerful thing and it's a very useful thing. Shamanism also is about not just philosophizing and going off in, into your head, but it's also about how do we grow corn with it? How do we take what we're gonna do tonight and the things we'll learn and and, and, and journey, and then use it in a very practical way for your own quality of life, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what I hope to, to give, you, give you tonight. Um, and it's with that spirit of, in, of the fact that we have a relationship with all that is, all of the all of the, the earth and the heavens and all the, the, the beings here, that we like to acknowledge um, them when we open sacred space. It's a way of calling on, it's calling on our brothers and sisters, if you will, that are all around us in the walls and the floors of this place um, that are all very conscious so that we recognize, that we recognize that we're not alone, that we are held, that, that the universe and all that is conspires to help us to do this, to be who we are and to take it beyond where it's ever been before. Think about that. You know, Homo sapiens is not, come on in, come on in with me. Set up some more chairs. Homo sapiens is not the end. <laughs> I always joke around that I'm sure Neanderthal thought they were amazing, you know, and <laughs> not, not, not a lot of them around anymore. So, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's over for us as conscious beings. We, we come back in more complex forms and to experience a whole new level of, of co-creating and and, um, and there is a, when we speak of particularly seeing like, like a shaman sees, 
it's a way of seeing from that part of our, our being. They say seeing with the eyes of the heart, for example, not just these, not just your third eye, but what does it really mean to, to see from the place of being the light itself? It's a different, it's, an, it's more of an act than a passive, it's more of an action than a, than a passive thing. When shamans see, it's seeing not only what is, but it's seeing what could be. And in the act of seeing what could be, we're, we're manifesting, we're helping to create it. All, anything. Okay. And there's no judge or scorekeeper, there's no way to do that wrong. But it is part of our birthright, essentially, to, to see this way and to create this way. And to, in a sense, um, protect it, protect that. We, 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 we often think of spirituality and, and being in the light as something that is, you know, completely acquiescent and completely surrendering. And, and of course, there are times when that's appropriate and it's a good, a good way to be. Um, shamans don't, we, we choose our battles very carefully because <laughs> most battles end in draws. It's not worth the time and the energy. But occasionally, <laughs> It's worth protecting yourself so that you can live to serve another day, that you can be, be helpful and be of service. So it's, it's okay sometimes. It's, it's been a theme recently and I actually um, posted a couple of videos the last couple of days around this theme because it was really coming up with a lot of my clients and friends of how do you protect yourself from heavy, negative, dark energies and entities that are trying to, trying to mess with us a little bit here. So you can you can go look at those for that, but tonight we'll we'll just we'll we'll, we'll explore this. So before um, we go much further, I always like to open the space and call on call on the team. So we'll do this together. We'll face uh, the directions. We'll start facing the south. If you don't mind uh, standing up again, get a little exercise. <laughs> about all I did. So. <laughs> stand up, sit down, stand up. All right, here we go. And just remember, you know, I'm going to call on the, the way that I've been taught and, and, um, and then uh, did my own variation. And so please feel free in, in your own mind and heart to, to uh, acknowledge who, who you would consider, you know, your team basically as well. So. To the winds of the south, Satchima, Hatunamaru, great serpent, mother of the waters, the rivers, the galaxies, the roads that bring us together. Come hold us in this healing space. Wrap your coils of light around us and help us to shed any of the heavy energies, old wounds that no longer serve us and instead teach us to be able to be grounded fully on the earth, close to the earth in our power, free, and gentle on ourselves. Be with us. Oh. And to the west. To the winds of the west. <clears throat> Otorongo, great jaguar. Come to us from the place of the setting sun and help us to leap beyond any limiting myths, beliefs, ancestral influences so that we can go further we can be warriors of the light, warriors who have no need to engage in battle, but instead are willing and able to dream, to have a vision, to ask and receive in any experience that we prefer. Be with us. Oh. Oh. To the winds of the north, Great healers, wisdom keepers, lineages of all, ancestors and guardians of this land. Come hold us in the ancient wisdom and the wisdom to come. We honor you who come before us and you who will come after us, our children's children. Help us take our seats with you. We've never left as powerful, free, childlike co-creators on this beautiful earth. And hummingbird, see work empty. Come, help us to drink of the nectar of life, to receive all that we need to be able 
to create another day to to take this journey beyond where it's been before. And to do that which seems impossible as you do. Be with us. Whoa. To the winds of the east, Hatankunta, great condor, Apuchi, Anka, eagle, help us to soar high, to have the broadest perspective, the clearest vision of our ideal destiny, and to bring it to earth, to grow corn with it, to embody it. Help us to listen to our bodies, to use our feelings as guidance and discernment. And it's a powerful way of asking to honor the feminine once again in this way fully put the heart above the head and fly wing to wing with great spirit with self-effort and grace be with us and to the earth mother earth great mother thank you that's your mama thank you for being our true mother for being in our bodies the air the water all your children the stone people the plant people the two-legged the four-legged creepy crawlers, the fin, the fur, and the winged ones, all our relations that not only feed us and bring us beauty and joy, house us and clothe us, but also help us to embody their characteristics and instincts when we need them, that which we have been and that we have within us, that they help us to access when we need it. And thank you, Mother, for taking the energies that are too heavy for us and mulching it mulching it and turning it into new life just as you do our waste so we don't have to carry it around any longer we can be free to take life beyond where it's been before here on your beautiful belly here in our bodies thank you mother oh. in Titaita, father son mama kia grandmother moon hatu chaska star brothers and sisters Thank you for showering us with your light, your energy, your cycles that make life possible for us here. Doing this unconditionally, without judgment, teaching us to treat ourselves and each other this way. In great spirit, Ileticha Wirakocha Wakantanka, you who are known by a thousand names, you're the inamable one that dwells within us and all around us in all forms. Thank you for bringing us together to sing this song of life one more day, to dance this dance of co-creation, to take it beyond where it's been before, new possibilities. And thank you for those you brought to us to help us and show us our potential. Thank you, Mike. Oh. Okay, thank you. Feels familiar, doesn't it? Even if this is the first time you've experienced it, mm -hmm. something we've done for lifetimes, and only in our modern Western cultures have we, you know, forgot <laughs> a little bit to do it. But it's good to do. It's funny when I work on children, really young children. There was one little girl, about four years old. I was working with the whole family and and did the opening of the space, and the next day her, her mother was walking by her room and caught a glimpse of her facing each of the directions. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm, you know, I'm calling on the, my angels or something like that. You know, it was like, they, they didn't even know she was paying attention when I was doing it, right? But it was like deep, you know, something we know. So, so, um, So if you think of the sun and as the as the main source of light, right? We're here celebrating the the, the sun at, at its and its its most you know the longest day, right? And what does it mean for us to be that, to be children of that sun, to have to also have that within us? How? What's the quality of the light of the sun? Um, it's not passive, it's not, it's pretty fierce, right? It's pretty intense. Um, it's very life-giving, it's sort of unending, nothing can really stop it, you know, that you can sort of, you can sort of block it out and, and, and try, but eventually it, it, it's, it just doesn't go anywhere. So that's you, you have that, we all have that 
we are all that light. Okay. And again, it's something to hold in that way that feels powerful and intense. It should feel invincible, not meek and mild. It's power, okay? And it's creative and it's beautiful. So, and it's unconditional, right? It doesn't not shine if you haven't done all the right things or thought the right thoughts, okay? So to see as a shaman, to see in that way, with the eyes of the heart, with, with, with the way that the, the father-son sees, is to set aside the judgments that come with the mind. You know, the, what we're seeing with these eyes is, is a lot of projection and a lot of filtering and a lot of potential judgment around, I don't like that, I don't, I don't, you know, approve of that, or, that's not the kind of seeing that we want to do. We, we want to see with the same unconditionality, to see what really is, to see what's behind all of that, to see when we look at somebody that way, we don't see their behaviors now, we see who they really are and what's built upon that, what's covering some of their own light. And, and then we can decide whether we want to hang out with it or not. We could be, still be discerning. Don't confuse non-judgment with lack of discernment. That's, a, that's what I was trying to say, like, be very vigilant and protective about where your energy is going and what you know what you're allowing to influence you you know and don't and you don't have to allow just anything and anyone to come into your space and your energy field your domain your house and you know run roughshod over over you and 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 bind you or or, or stop you from doing anything. No, that's when it requires this sort of, this sort of um, intense ability to, to protect your own light so that it can shine another day. So that's what I was saying that video is about. That's a lot of, of, of protection um, techniques and calling on help from the, the spirit world and, and, and having your team help you with that. <laughs> Okay, because it's it's real, this sort of this battle, <laughs> if you will, between light and dark and all this kind of stuff, you know. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, because a lot of times when you're feeling a little dull, a little down, a little bit off, a little bit not quite in your power and shining that light and and dreaming your world into being, being the creator, it's not always because there's something wrong with you. It's not, you know, that's the tendency. Oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, what do I need to do? What do I need to work on? I must be... No, sometimes it's literally you're just, you're just being piled on by uh, external influences or, or, or internal influences, and it's okay to clear them out. It's okay to send them out. Create that space for yourself. Hold that space for yourself. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm oh, saying? Very. So it doesn't mean you're not a nice person. It doesn't, you know, that's where it gets a little, people get a little bit off about it. Like, well, shouldn't I just surrender to that? And it's like, yeah, no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> Don't surrender that. Um, yeah, that then allows you, you see, it, it creates the space for you to really go to that place of love because it's protected. It goes to the plate. It allows you to be vulnerable. It allows you to see with the eyes of the heart. It allows you to exercise compassion and empathy, you know, and be helpful where you can be to who you can be because there'll be plenty of those opportunities. Okay. So that's the shaman's way. That's what we mean by the shaman's way of seeing. I'm, you know, when I look down at my Carol teacher's weavings. It's a very fascinating thing because their consensus reality. So think of it in, in our Western culture. Our consensus reality is we can all agree we're sitting in a gift and bookstore on chairs. 
not too hard to not too hard to have a consensus over that. And we can all agree for the most part that we're hearing the same thing coming from my mouth, you know, the words. So the mind and your physical world, we can sort of agree on. What we start to lose in the Western culture here is um, myths. What, what's that deeper subconscious layer? What's the meaning of if a hawk flies by, do we all agree on what it means? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> right? It's gonna, that, that's, that could be a lot of different things. And then, is it, and then in terms of just the pure energy, the pure soul of a person or the, um, you know, the orange chakras and the energy fields around things, we don't even, as Westerners, generally agree that, that it even exists. Right? Most in, in the room here do, you know, but in general, it's like, yeah, that stuff's, you know, you know what that is. Um, To the Caro, this, this amazing group of, of shamans that have been in the area there in South America for 15,000 years, and like Emery said, isolated themselves for 500 years, and so they never really got influenced by our Western culture in any way. Their consensus reality is the energy. They don't agree that this is a chair. You get 10 of them and they all say it's 10 different things. So like <laughs> there's like 50 political parties in Peru. Like <laughs> what? Like what would the chair be? Ten? What were, like well, I could use it as a things. table. I could use it as a stool. I can, <laughs> I can throw, you know, it just, it's, it's just strange. You know, I mean, it's, it's an but, example. But they don't go into, I was thinking the physics. Did they go into different physics? Also? Yeah, no, not, not really. Okay, <laughs> there, okay. There's a limit to all this. Okay. But, but the, the real point here is that they, they all see energy. So when they, when they do their weavings, if you look at the rest of the Peruvian natives for the most part, their weavings will be of llamas and corn and sort of their day-to-day -day stuff, you know, life, right? This is all energy patterns, right? And if you look at the Huichol, it's the same, you know, it's. These are mountains and people and stars and the sun, the way it looks to them. Intricate waves of energy and stuff like that. So that's like an extreme way of, of seeing. And we don't, have, we don't wanna be in that state all the time <laughs> in this world, you know. But, but the reason that they weave it into the blankets is because it's the way of, it's the way of anchoring for them what these things mean to them and, and it's their cosmology it's a way it's the you know when it, when i work with people i have what's called the mythic homework which is ritual ceremony images symbols art music poetry it's paintings and altars and things like that it's not words and thinking it's not the energy work that we do underneath it but it's really important it's really important to like anchor your visions in a kind of physical form so like you've heard of vision boards and you know, you think of it like cutting out magazine things of the car and the house. It's not, not the way we do it. We say, you know, something like my ultimate, you know, destiny <coughs> would be to feel like I'm free and I'm surrounded by angels and light and friends, and that would be my vision board. That's me. That's how it would feel to have my dream come true. Do you see what I mean? It's more of a, it's a little more of just a, a kind of feeling and, a, and, and less detail oriented. That's the shaman's way of seeing. Broadening out, out of detail and more into feeling and more into experience. What would it feel like? You know, what, what, what would, you know, I meet somebody new and I'm, and I'm engaging in a relationship with them. What would be the best feeling I could have? What would be the best day, the best experience? Laughing, playing, joking around. That's what, that's how you wanna see. Not, I don't know how we're ever gonna get along because they dress funnier, you know? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like seeing in the, the literal. We don't do the literal as much. Does that, does that make sense a little bit like yeah. that?
Less focus on the material world. Less, essentially less focus on the material as the thing, but mm -hmm. more as a way that we get our experiences brought to us. Mm -hmm. So the material world is important. Can't have these experiences without it so much. But recognizing that I can get the same experience from five different types of material. I get the same experience from five different kinds of material things. <laughs> Or five different people. I don't need to have that one. That's too limited. Okay, so it's broadening your vision to be like, I don't really care what form it comes in. I just want to feel like that universe. And then mysterious ways begin to unfold and synchronicities and what you thought was going to be over here, you turned right and it was over here. Does that make sense? So there's no, that, that gets rid of judgment, see, because you can't say that thing's bad because you don't know that that thing doesn't lead you to the thing you really wanted, right? So there's no room for judgment. It's more of a neutral observation of, I already know what my vision is. I already know what I see in terms of what I want my experience to be. So I have faith, I, I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust that the universe will deliver it. And it may deliver it in some funny path that doesn't make sense to me, and I don't understand. Right. And it feel, feels bad sometimes, and, <laughs> you know? But, I'm, but that allows me to practice my uh, discernment. I, I don't have to say it's bad to walk away from it. <clears throat> Does that make sense? It's okay to walk away <laughs> and see what happens next. It's, it's not helpful to say, oh my God, that was so bad. <laughs> That's something, we ought to get rid of that. We got to get that off the planet, right? No, no, it's all, because it all becomes a way that the universe brings you what, you're, what you've envisioned, what you've seen. Yeah, and, and when it comes to things like what's the truth and what's the meaning of something, the shaman's way of seeing is what's the meaning, what do I want it to mean? Because I'm the creator, I'm the co-creator. This is Viktor Frankl, right, in the Holocaust, who said, you know, this fish head soup could mean that I'm being tortured and treated very badly, but I'm going to see it as a gourmet meal while I'm on vacation from work <laughs> in this place. And that's pretty intense, right? But that's an act of power. <clears throat> to, sh to see this way, to change your perception from what seems to be obviously the thing that you can judge as good or bad, instead to, to change your perception and in spite of what's actually happening, stay in the place where you, s where you see what you want to be the truth and what you want to be the meaning. That's the act of power that then the universe makes you right, <laughs> experientially. The person next to you, don't know. They, they, they are also right. The question is, what do you want to be right about? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You want to, you, and this is faith. This is true faith. It's saying, wow, I mean, I don't have to accept it the way the consensus says that it is. I can. I could perceive it differently like Viktor Frankl did, and, and that's okay. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, because ultimately your experience will match the way you're seeing, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. The other way around. Right? If you see the way you were told you should see it, whatever event, whatever's happening, then you're right. Everybody's right. That's what is, and that's what you're going to experience. But the shamans know we're more powerful than that. We're children of the sun. We're powerful creators. Everything conspires to make, to make us that. So to see this other way is that is exercising the fullness of your power that you have, you have come to embody. So, so that's the goal, essentially, <laughs> you know, of of all the healing work we do, of all the philosophies and all the spiritual teachings, 
ultimately is to get to that place where you're free and in your power enough to begin to create from being the light that goes out and that the universe then matches <coughs> and delivers. Yeah, that's who you are. That's who you really are. And um, any questions about that at this point? It's a little, it's, it's a little twist to the, <laughs> to the brain, I know. But, um, but what we'll do is we'll step out of the brain, we'll step out of the thinking now, and we'll go into a journey, and we'll step into the, the energetic and the mythic, and we'll, <clears throat> we'll explore these concepts in a very deep way so that it, you go home with it being something that has become deeply in, ingrained. So you, it's not just about remembering what I said and then having life hit you and just going back to, to the other way. It's really something I want you to walk out of here um, remembering inside deeply, okay? So the journey will be to uh, to do that, and so I'm going to be shaking my rattles, and you'll just sit and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, and <coughs> I'm going to talk you through this, but it's okay if your brain starts to space out or can't keep up or is thinking of dinner. That's okay, because this isn't about the brain. <laughs> we don't need the brain. Now, we're going to go deeper, and this is how it works, and so, um, get the, the condor feathers out to help us with this vision, and everybody's okay, pretty comfortable? Yeah, really? Okay, great. Few deep breaths. Through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And I want you to begin to be aware that the process of breathing and all the processes deep within your cells of creating the energy to be here in physical form are all the same process <coughs> as the sun, the father-son combusting hydrogen and other elements to create light and heat. Every cell of your body has that process in it. As you breathe, you're breathing in the fuel and you're exhaling the light like the sun. combination of the sun and the earth, of all the elements, you're the leading edge of that combination and the creation process that ensues. You are a creator.
So let's go into the center of our heart, which is also the center of our soul. your essential self, of that which is still you after this body and was still you before this body, going back to the beginning and forward to the beginning, eternal. So with each breath, you're breathing as the eternal being that you are. This body, this life, time itself, are just specks. And now you're seeing as that eternal life. You're seeing with the eyes of the sun, of the light, of the source. And as you look out from that place, just as if you were the sun looking down at the planet, with great love, you can imagine what it'll feel like to create what's next, to create 10,000 years into the future even. be here to experience that. Feel that beauty and that power that you carry, you hold, that none holds more than you do. And that it is your birthright, the birthright of your soul, to dream a vision. dream an ideal world and universe. And as the stone people and the plant people and the animals and you and the whales and dolphins and spirit dream in this way see in this way. It creates a very powerful signal. And the great promise is that you will experience this vision. your internal light of the sun that fuels and nurtures your vision. 
and helps it to manifest and grow here on the earth. Claim that power, own that power, protect that power. There's nothing that can get in the way of it, ever. You simply have to own it. Feel it like the sun feels. Feel it with that heat and that intensity. Feel it with that gravitational pull. You are the sun and your vision will orbit you. <laughs> and now feel it in every cell of your body, of this body. Feel it permeating every cell, every system, every organ, every strand of DNA, this fierce, powerful energy of the sun, of your vision, fueling your cells, combusting your food, burning the oxygen in your breath. cooled by the waters of the earth. Grounded by your mother earth. So that you can both be the creator and the experiencer of your vision. That's what makes it fun. That's creation. Imagine your body 10,000 years from now. So come back to this body in this time, in this part of the theater. And rub your hands together and feel your face, feel your body. Make sure you're fully back and present. <clears throat> Do things look a little different? Maybe? So. <laughs> you notice that? Even these eyes start to change a little. Even this body starts to change a little. So that's how powerful you are. When you, when you, when you leave here tonight, see if you can see like the, the Carol do. Exercise this power. Exercise this true vision of yours. Don't just see what is. <laughs> see if you can see when you when you look at the sun, the, 
the Carol call it intititaita, which means the sun behind the sun. That's <laughs> what they see. <laughs> What's behind that ball of light in the sky? So, it's supposed to confound the mind a little bit. It's supposed to push the, the envelope of your normal perception and knowledge and information. It's supposed to be a little bit weird. Okay, <laughs> so let, let yourself be, be a little bit weird for a little bit. And then get back to work Monday. <laughs> cool? All right. So, like I said, it, it, uh, there's a lot of people that have been, um, it, it seemed to have been a time, there was this real sense of urgency for me to do this video that I did a couple of days ago about um, clearing and protecting yourself. So, check that out, perhaps, if you Google. Um, I don't know, John Rasmussen or Shaman John on YouTube or something, you'll see my channel, it's on there. So. What else, Emery? I don't know, it's been great so far. And I don't want to uh, spoil the move with too many questions, but perhaps... Um, yeah. So we have to take one more question, perhaps. Oh, the question. What is the answer <laughs> to the universe? 42. 42. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, let me just say that, you know, I, I am, I mean, the honor and the gratitude that I feel for being put in this position, for somehow landing here amongst all of you great, great souls is, is beyond words. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sharing some stuff here, but it isn't anything you all haven't already known and carried and, you know. It's just a little reminder, and I'm just really grateful that I get to do this. And, you know, to Emery, and, and, you know, Maya have done this for me. So, anyway, I hope you, I hope you walk out of here feeling that. <laughs> feeling your greatness you. and your you. kindred spirit to the sun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we have uh, John's book and several of the CDs available. Thank you all for coming and have a wonderful summer. Happy summer Happy solstice. solstice. Yes. Happy solstice. Yes. It's just going to get better. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I just feel the call to say something about that. With the numbers here, it, it just feels to me as if there is such a call to unite and to space wherever we go. Like yoga off the mat. Yeah. So thank you for, um, to, for that call to connect in that way. Yeah, thank you for that. I feel that. I feel like we're all in that same frequency now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to spread. Everywhere you go, this is very contagious, so to speak. It's an influence, right? Now you're the influencer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So whoever comes around you will be influenced by you more than anything else. I just also want to say, like, not to be, to be dual, but there's a plethora of lovely women here. <laughs> and I just thought that should be taken, to yeah. you, take that to note. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank, <mostly> God. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for that and the power of the feminine, because it is the answer, and we... Men know that. <laughs> and are grateful and honored, truly. Humble, truly. Honest, honestly, thanks for, thanks for bringing that. You know, I think it's we are, We're entering wonderful. the age of the Divine Mother. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And this is also a time of great uh, awake, planetary and individual awakening. So I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, wo a wonderful opportunity and uh, a source of gratitude just to be alive and present. And planet now, so yeah. we have to remember that in the times of uh, when we are challenged mm -hmm. and the, when the ador ordeals arise, to, to always remember to be grateful that the, these experiences are brought to us by world destiny in order to uh, awaken us. Mm -hmm. So we don't need 
more words. But thank you, John, mm. and um, thank you yeah. all for coming tonight. And see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to go to the battle after